Junk Removal Warriors. Joseph here, Vets Hall, Junk Removal, Stafford, Virginia. Hope wherever you are, you're staying busy and making money in junk removal. Aaron and I are heading out to Fredericksburg, Virginia this morning to do a brush removal job. After we dump that off at the landfill, we will be heading back to Stafford, Virginia to help a veteran clean out his garage and remove a few larger items to prepare his home for sale so that he can be reassigned. After that, we are potentially waiting on another job to close from a lady who reached out to us last night as well. She has just a bunch of junk that needs to be removed from her attic. After that, at 6 p.m. this evening, I'm gonna do a junk removal estimate for a veteran spouse here in Stafford, Virginia. And I will be arriving at her home to do the estimate with an empty trailer. Guys, when the customer sees that you're able to do the job, you either have an empty truck or an empty trailer and they know you're serious, you don't have to work very hard to close the deal. Just the mere fact that you have an empty trailer or truck ready, willing, and able to work is oftentimes enough to close the deal. So when you should ensure that when you do estimates, you show up ready to do the job. I spoke to a young lady last night by the name of Sarah out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Both her and her sister decided to get into junk removal. Um, she called me last night because she watched one of my previous videos talking about the importance of choosing a good name and logo for your junk removal business. Guys, I truly do believe a good name and logo for your junk removal business will either kill your business or propel your business into the stratosphere. So we didn't really talk much about her logo last night. I zeroed in on her name and I asked her, why did you decide on S and J junk removal? She says, well, those are mine and my sister's initials, so it just made sense. I said, it may make sense to you, but as a customer, S and J junk removal would not speak to me. Now, I'm not saying I wouldn't call you. I'm saying that my first impression of S and J junk removal doesn't really give me an impression. Jeff Glass, you should look him up. He's part of the National Junk Removal Business Owners Group on Facebook. If you're not yet a part of the National Junk Removal Business Owners Association Facebook group, search us. We really do welcome smaller and medium-sized mom and pop junk removal businesses, so check us out. It's a great place where you can network, uh, share lessons learned, and just learn a lot of tips and tricks and techniques, no tricks tips and techniques of how to make your junk removal business more successful and more profitable. But Jeff Glass of AMG puts it, I think, the best of anyone. He says, tell a story and create a culture. With s and junk removal, guys, there's no story there. There's no culture. I think about a junk removal entrepreneur by the name of Cade Swallow who operates code five junk removal brilliant name he is a i believe either is or was a firefighter his colors for his junk removal company and his trucks are all red and he's telling a story he's creating a culture it is a brilliant brilliant name and he has an absolutely brilliant logo it speaks to the customer it tells a story it creates a culture that's a winner I also don't want to forget Vets Hall Junk, once again, tells a story, creates a culture. I believe our logo is brilliant. All of our trucks are wrapped uh, with a Marpat or Multicam, if you will. So we're telling a story, we're creating a culture when the customer first sees us. We don't have to speak to the customer. The customer can look at our logo, hear our name, knows who we are, what we do. They get the warm and fuzzies. They know a little bit about our culture because they see we're military branded. But I don't think s and junk removal is it, guys. I was also talking to a police officer last night whose son just got into junk removal in Montgomery County, Virginia. He was advising his son to come up with something a little catchier in the way of a name. His son uh, decided on a couple of initials as well for junk removal. It's working, guys. So, you know... This advice I'm giving you, it's not the end all be all, but I think that SNJ junk removal can still work. But do I believe the likelihood of 
creating that image in the customer's mind would be greater if they had something catchier, something more niche, if you will, to speak to the customer upon first glance. You know, when the customer's going through Google trying to find a junk removal company, Betts Hall Junk, Code 5 Junk Removal, uh, GI Junk is another good one, is gonna speak to the customer immediately before the customer gets any kind of message from S and J Junk Removal. So long story short, Sarah, is taking a step back and we started talking about what is unique, Sarah? What is unique about your business that you can zero in on to tell a story, to create a culture so that when the customer sees your name, they automatically get those warm and fuzzies. So we decided that one of the most powerful elements of her business is the fact that this is a junk removal company that's going to be owned and operated by two sisters. And that reminds me of a story of two sisters in another industry. You ever heard of Lipstick Bail Bonds? Lipstick Bail Bonds was created on the West Coast and it's owned by two sisters and they totally, totally disrupted a male-dominated industry, which is Bail Bonds, and they capitalized on the fact that they are two females in a male-dominated industry. They branded all of their vehicles and their marketing material pink uh, with a couple of lips, lipstick lips, on all of their marketing material. And they are killing it, guys. So if you are a female getting into junk removal, I believe that you should really zero in on the fact that you are female, you know, play on that, play on that, Sarah. Another example of a really good niche type name is Keisha Harris out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Keisha Harris has triple seven junk removal. Brilliant. If you're not gonna key in on the fact that you're a female, that you're a woman in junk removal, then take a look around, take a look at your environment. Where do you live? If you're in Las Vegas, I think that triple seven junk removal is brilliant, guys. So Sarah and I continued to talk about some type of logo for her business. And I said, females, empowerment, strength, disruptive, you can do it. How about Rosie the Riveter? Or some kind of derivative, or is that the right word? Some type of, of a derivative based on Rosie the River, Riveter. And uh, you know, she kind of likes that. Guys, Rosie the Riveter, is not trademarked, it's in the public domain, so we all own it, okay? So she can use that. So at this particular moment, guys, she's not committed to using the Rosie the Riveter logo, although she likes it. Uh, she is open to deciding on a different name than S and J, Junk Removal. I just think, guys, that when you are creating your brand, when you're creating your logo, you need to think about it from the perspective of the client. You know, this is a cutthroat industry. There are competitors in junk removal popping up every day. You need to give yourself every possible advantage to succeed. When a customer is scrolling through Google and they see, I don't know, all these different junk removal companies, and then they see Vets Hall Junk Removal, they know who we are, they know what we do, and they see the power in our logo and our name. And that was by design, guys. Nothing that I do is by accident. So I would just encourage you that if you are getting into the junk removal industry and you haven't quite formulated your name or your image yet, guys, lend the utmost importance. Give it the attention that it deserves. Find a name that encompasses who you are find a name that includes the niche maybe that you want to serve. If you're female guys, if you're a woman getting into the junk removal industry, I think you're going to kill it because that is, that's really disruptive. And when you can draw attention to yourself, Lee Godbold gave this advice a while back. One of the keys to growth is you need to draw attention to yourself. You need to be noticed. Sarah, you're not going to be noticed if you continue with the name S and J junk removal. So that being said, guys, we are headed to our first job of the morning. Joy, joy, guys, here we go. We got three small piles of brush, and then we got a large pile 
of brush. Let me give it to you from a different angle. So we're going to get started on this and we'll knock this out, I say in about 30 minutes or so. We got all of the brush removed and left the customer happy. So now we're on to the next job. All right, guys, here we are at the second job of the day. And we just have all of this stuff right here for this veteran homeowner who is getting ready to sell his home, as well as a few bits and pieces inside pretty much everything you see out here is going there's a bunch of stuff inside the house as well that's going to be removed so all right guys first you saw it now you don't if you're in stafford virginia fredericksburg woodbridge and you have stuff that needs to be removed maybe you're moving why don't you call the junk removal company powered by veterans and patriots at 540-657-VETS that's 540-657-VETS. I'm Joseph, owner of Vets Hall Junk Removal in Stafford, Virginia, and we're on the move making things happen. hoo -ah. Talk to you next time. See ya.